if it had no works, is dead and lonely. Today I want to share with you a message that would encourage you as a child of God. I want to share with you a message that will inspire you and then empower you. Because as a child of God, it gets to a point in time, thank you, that you may think that God has forsaken you. You may think that when I pray, I don't get results. And it's when I need the Lord most that it seems the Lord always turns a blind eye at me. But there's a special ingredient as a child of God and as a believer. And as we are just in the early part of the year 2022, for us not to go and do the same thing that we do always, it's okay, we have our resolutions, we've done a whole lot for the year, our projections, and yet come November, December, we look at our projections and our ratings and we see that we have not been able to accomplish them. But I'm here as a servant of God to tell you that if only we would take this word today, put it in our pocket, in our head, in our mind, body, spirit, and soul, and run with it, you will see that the battle or whatever you need is not about the strength you carry to accomplish, but it is the connectivity that God brings when you call on Him. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to share with you something briefly on faith. And as James says, he says, what does it profit if you say you have faith and you have no works? That means faith alone will not result in what you are seeking for. You declaring and you receiving the prophetic word will not bring you results if you don't have faith. The prophet will minister to you. But if you don't receive it with faith, it will amount to nothing. Amen. Amen. Why am I saying this? I don't want the prophet to be standing here all day, all time, making declarations. You leave there, you go, and you still come back the same. When your declaration comes, you need to take it with a substance of faith. And now you need to put that declaration into practice. That is why it says that faith without works. That means, yes, it is good you have faith, but if you don't put an action to the faith, it still remains where it is. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let me quickly, you know, share a story with you that we are all familiar with in the Bible. I will not read much, but it's from Matthew chapter 14. Matthew 14. Once upon a time when Jesus the Christ sent his disciples that, listen, after feeding 5,000 and he said, let us cross to the other side because we have a lot of work to do. And when they crossed to the other side, the Messiah did not go with them. He left them and then he asked them to go because he was going to meet them at the other side. Matthew chapter 14. And here comes the situation when the Lord had left them. And Bible says that when Jesus left them, he went on his own to pray. But what was happening to the disciples? The disciples encountered a storm. Just after a miracle of feeding 5,000 with just five loaves. Now they encounter a storm. Maybe your miracle you've received is the fact that God has seen you through 2021 and you are in 2022. But just two months into the new month, your storm is with you. You may be facing a storm and maybe yours might even be a, a, you know, a carryover. Maybe you are carrying a backpack with your issues from 2021 and you are still trying and moving along with it. But let's look at what happened to the disciples. It says they began to fear and they knew or they thought, oh, this is going to be the end of us. Because the one whom we even depend on has left us. We are by ourselves. And maybe that is your story today. You feel you are on your own or you are by yourself. But I want you to know that in your storm, that is when Jesus the Christ shows up. Amen. Amen. 
Jesus the Christ will not leave you nor abandon you. He shows up in your storm. But how are you able to identify that this is the Messiah? This is God. If you read from verse 22 downwards, it says, And Peter answered and said, Okay, let me take it from um, 25. It says, And in the fourth watch, and when the Bible talks about the fourth one, watch, it's talking about between 3 to 4 a.m. at dawn. It says, around that time at deep sea of the night, Jesus went on to them, walking on the sea. 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out of fear. They cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Hallelujah. Amen. What is the storm you are encountering or you are going through this year, 2022? You might be saying that it is too early for me to be experiencing this. Last year was Wahala. This year too. Oh, why? Is it that I'm not praying enough? Is it that I have done something wrong that is not permitting my prayers to penetrate into the realms of heaven? Dear beloved, I want you to know that as a child of God, afflictions will come. Temptations will come. Challenges will come. But I'm here to tell you that if you reckon from the Bible, all the very great men and women of God who have a prophecy, who God assigned and put them aside to be prominent and blessed people, they did not get there troubleless. Amen. Amen. Okay, let me continue with my story of faith. So this is Peter, who saw Jesus and felt like, oh, there's hope around. Now let me call unto Jesus and say, save us. Or rescue us. Because he has said that be not afraid. Be not, be, do not be troubled. So Jesus and Peter saw Jesus walking on the sea and said, Master, if it is you, beat me so that I come also unto you. And Jesus the Christ answered and said to him that come. You see, we serve a God who is so loving. We serve a God who responds to us when we call on him. But our faith is the reason why sometimes we feel he's not answering us. We will ask God to do something for us. Mm -hmm. And just after we have finished praying about this very particular thing, and we close the Bible, we begin to sit down and now worry. What are you telling God? You have asked me to do something for you. And the next moment, you are now worrying about the very same thing you have asked me. Are you telling me I'm not capable of doing it? Don't I have what it takes to do it? And that is why sometimes when we ask in prayer, sometimes when our prophecies come to us, and yet we go about calling other people, calling men, and asking for their help, then we are telling God that, yes, I have asked you, but I believe that you are not able to do it for me at the time I want. And so I'm going to seek also for mommy and so for mommy. I need this thing tomorrow morning. Are you able to help me? Because the God I serve, when I pray, He gives me at the time that He wants. And even today, I don't know whether He will give me tomorrow or I don't know He will give me next week. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Peter asking Jesus that bid me to come. He said, Come. But what did Peter do? And that is what we do as Christians. Peter began to walk on the sea with his focus on Jesus. He was walking towards Jesus because his focus was on Jesus. He was walking towards Jesus. And so Peter was able to break the law of nature. Peter was able to disprove whatever scientists and scientific research has proven. He was able to break that law by keeping his gaze on Jesus. But one thing that Peter did that I pray today and from this very moment as we hear this word, you and I will not see ourselves doing again is by looking at our circumstances. Peter, Bible says that and the sea and the wind became boisterous. Listen, when you get to the point 
where you feel that I am being taken away tomorrow. Yes, it is tomorrow. My time is 12 in the afternoon. It is 11.20. It is 11.30. It is 11.40. It is 11.50. It is 11.55. At that point, if you don't give up, God will show up. But when you look at the clock and you see 10 minutes to time, God is still not showing up. He is not even on a bus or on a train. And you don't even know if he's been caught with congestion somewhere else. Then you begin to panic. As long as and as soon as you open your heart for panic, that is when the enemy also creeps in slowly and tells you that the time is due. But today, God forbid that you will see yourself in such a situation and you begin to panic and fear. Amen. Amen. Bible says that as soon as Peter took his eyes off Jesus and began to look left and right, he told the boisterous sea that I realize that you are so powerful than the one I'm looking up to because I fear you that the way you have become boisterous and you are raging up at me, if I don't look and panic a little bit, you will consume me. But he forgot that there's somebody whose voice thunders upon the sea. Bible says in Psalm, it says that the voice of the Lord tenders and is upon the waters. That is why Jesus the Christ at a certain point in time, when the disciples, the same people again, were being consumed by the sea, he stood up and said, peace be still. Peter forgot that there was somebody with him who could talk to the sea, and the sea would listen to him. Peter forgot that the one that he was walking to, he was more powerful than the boisterous sea. But yet, the fear of him sinking, Got into sin. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Is somebody catching the revelation? Yes. Are you being blessed? Yes. Then say a big amen. amen. The same way, once upon a time, there was a girl whose father and mother were dead. She was in a hopeless situation. But who knew that Esther would rise up? To become queen. And when Esther became queen, there was a point in time where the Jews were being troubled. The Jews were faced with death. Mordecai approached Esther and said, Esther, this is the situation we find ourselves. Esther was trying to play, well, for me I'm safe. I'm in the king's palace. It's your own issue. But Mordecai had to remind Esther that don't think that if destruction come, you and your father's house will be saved. That was when Esther rose up to the realization that, hey, trouble is ahead. But that is not even the story that I want you to know. I want you to see how Esther, with her faith in God, was able to distract was able to break and was able to go against a decree that has been made in the kingdom of King Ahasuerus. There was a decree and was signed with the ring of the king that all the Jews should be killed. And as if that is not enough, you cannot even go to the presence of the king if you have not been invited to. And that is a law, regardless of who you are. Even if you are the mother of the king, you still cannot do it. But what did Esther do? Because of faith. Because of faith. If you read the book of Esther, chapter 4, verses 15 to 16, then Esther bade them return to Mordecai. This, uh, then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. And fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go into the king, which is not according to the law. Amen. Amen. Maybe you today, you might not be seeing yourself in the king's palace. But there is the law. That is fighting against you. 
you may find yourself today against the law of the home office. And when you look at judges or when you consult legal professionals or legal practitioners, they are telling you, my brother, the best thing you have to do is either you go or you just gallop say around. And even that one, when Wahala comes, you're on your own. Hallelujah. But today I stand before the prophet's altar as the servant of God. And I am telling you that your faith can break that decree. Your faith can break that law which is being placed upon you wherever it is coming from. As long as you believe. Look, Esther said, I am going before the king even though it is not allowed. Even though the law says you cannot come there. I'll go. If I perish, I perish. And that statement alone was the statement of faith. Because you know what Esther did? Esther was telling God that after I have fasted three days and three nights, if I don't believe that your fasting will heal me, if I don't believe that I will get answers from fasting, I will eat a body. But I am coming before you as a sacrifice of fasting. And after I have given you what I am giving you, I am also expecting you to come through for me. That was the negotiation Esther had with God. He says, gather the people. We will fast three days, three nights without food. And God, don't turn a blind eye at what we are doing. Look at what we are doing. And on the day when I go there, rescue me. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, I don't know what legality or what law or decree has been placed on you. But I can tell you and I can assure you that if only you will not waver in faith. If only you will not let your faith be shaken. You may be sitting down and say, hmm. You are just saying it as easy as it sounds. But if you were in my shoes, but I'm also telling you that if you were in the shoes of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when the king told them that there's been a decree, whether you like it or not, you have to bow when you hear the trumpet. And you saw fancy feathers burning to the extent that those who were even going to ignite the fire got consumed. And they were able to look at the face of the king and tell the king, don't worry yourself. Don't even try to blow it again. Because whether you blow it now or tomorrow, me, I won't go. And even if the God that I serve does not come through for me, I am prepared to die for him. You see, in this second instance, Esther broke a law. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were also prepared to break a law because of their faith. And I believe you are getting the connection. Peter, in his case, was able to break the law, but at some point in time, reverted. And he got consumed. But in this case, these three young men said that whether you blow it or not, whether God comes to my rescue or not, I am still prepared to die for him. What sort of faith did these people have? That Christians of today and believers of today, are we able to emulate or are we able to practice that kind of faith? Beloved, I want you to know that faith, in its numerous explanations and definitions, comes with two things. Your faith needs work. You need to exercise your faith because I cannot see your faith and you cannot see my faith. But the demonstration and the exercising of my faith will tell you, just as Esther, just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and just as Daniel also said, that, listen, you have made another decree. So now this is the third decree that faith is still breaking. He says, yes, you have made a decree that nobody should pray. But as for me, I will open my windows. And not just open my windows, I will go on my knees. And I will go towards my window. And I will make a decree and ask of God. And he did it. What happened? Daniel was arrested. 
Daniel was put in the lion's den. But one thing that the king did, if you read the book of Daniel, it says that when he was put in the lion's den, the king says that, Daniel, I pray and I pray that your God, who you serve and worship, will be able to rescue you. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the same person who put Daniel into the lion's den, unconsciously made a decree against the law that he has made. That I pray that your God will save you. Amen. He thought he was just mocking Daniel. But then he did not know that that word he has spoken, coupled with the faith of Daniel, was established in the realms of the spirit. And the angels held on held on to the word that the king said. And said, if you, you are saying that, let the God that I said rescue me. We have taken it. And with the faith that my servant has, I will rescue him. And you know what happened? The king could not even sleep. Bible says that his sleep was taken away from him. Amen. 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 To the extent that he woke up early at dawn, going to check if Daniel was still there. And when he called Daniel, Daniel said, oh, leave long king for my God, for your God, for your God, for your God. For your downfall, the very people who are wishing that you will amount to nothing, the very people who are gathered this day, yesterday, and even tomorrow, and are planning evil against you, let them be the same people who will come and bow to you. Let them be the same people who will see you and testify of God's goodness. Let them be the same people you will meet and you will tell them that, oh, live long. Not because I want you to live long, but live long so that you'll be able to serve me for long. Hallelujah. Amen. What am I trying to tell you this afternoon? All I'm trying to tell you is that nothing is impossible when you have faith. It is not as easy though. You might think it's easy. But you see, if you should get to the extent where you can say, I have made up my mind, whether good or bad, if I go and I perish, I perish. If I trust in the Lord and I do not get answers to my prayer, I take my part. If I put all my hopes in God and I still feel that He is not coming to my rescue, Still say I depend on you. You see, God is not a big God. Elijah, at some point in time, demonstrated faith by openly and publicly declaring that it will not rain. And it did not rain. Imagine when he said that, and the next day it rained. He had made a decree in the name of the Lord. Listen, if you are ready to commit God, God will be committed to you. It is not easy though, but if you are ready to say, Father, I have no other person but you. This is my situation. This is my story. Because your faith minus or take away the work will not amount to anything. Do not let the work of the prophet become so difficult and hard that when he has had the revelation and spoken to you about it, now you begin to doubt. You begin to call A and B and say, listen, I have this prophecy two days ago. The man of God said tomorrow by 10 a.m. But even if it is almost 10, I'm not seeing anything. Listen, let it be 10 a.m. And tell yourself, 
and say, Father, it is you who promised. It was your word that came to me. Even if the time has passed, maybe it might not be 10 this morning. Maybe it could be 10 p.m. And so even if a.m. has passed, today is still today. Today is still the same. There are two times in the same. There's one a.m. and there's one p.m. My faith is telling me that when the a.m. has passed, I still have p.m. And so I will wait to the p.m. I will not give up on you. I will lay posture before Amen. you. I will cast all my hope. I will cast all my faith. I will cast all my trust in you. Because I believe you are the God who opens door. I know you are the God who promised and you never fail. You are the one who declares and it comes to pass. And as I keep my faith in you, I know you will not be put to shame. That is why James 2 17 says that faith without works will amount to nothing. I don't know what you have come into the presence of God this afternoon with. I don't know what you are trusting and are believing God for. But I want you and I to exercise this message today. That which we have been praying, we have been asking, we have been seeking for long, and it seems like we are not getting answers. I want you to today tell God the Father.
you will have the faith Amen. in God. Amen. We are not going to be like Peter. And that tells you that even in the exercising of your faith, when you are still marking time in faith, the storms will still be by your side. Amen. That is when you see the time is clicking and clocking away. But if only today you keep your focus on Jesus. Amen. That no matter what messages and letters and news you hear, mm. let the news be there. Let me just say this briefly. When COVID came, I remember that I had friends who called me man of God, I want you to stand with me in prayer. And I said, what is going on? And he said, listen, I just listened to the news. And I said, listen, you are just worried yourself. And it's what you are feeding your ears that is going to be fear to you. But to the me, I don't watch the news. And even if I watch news, I watch sports news. Because sports will tell me that when I exercise, I will become strong. So instead of listening to news and counting that, what has dead bodies got to do with me? I don't carry dead bodies. So why do I waste my time? I'm not saying the news is bad, but I won't tune into the news wanting to know updates on how many people are dying. I would rather watch something that will tell me to exercise and be healthy. And so I told them, listen, if you feed your ears and look at the storm, if you look at your surrounding and look at your circumstance, that is where if you are walking somewhere and somebody even just close to you, you need to move away. Listen, walk in the light of God. Amen. Walk in the faith of God. Amen. Yes, the situation is there. Don't be adamant. The situation is there. But as you leave house, as you leave your house, declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I walk in the light of God. Every dark cloud or every dark veil that is beside or around me, in the name of Jesus, I cast the light of God into it. And I am a child of God. And Bible says that as a child of God, I am more than a conqueror. You see, make declarations and pronouncements and take your mind off the negative. And that is exercising your faith. Amen. And when you exercise your faith, you are telling God, I have no other but you. Amen. I have no other but
heavy. Amen. So I was just saying it while I was sitting up there. So the Holy Spirit is at work. I want to just lift up your right hand and say, I have no.